Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to Real Hi-Fi. We're going on the road again to monitor audio for the third video in this recent little series. But this time we're going to talk about the hyphen loudspeaker. Like I said in the previous two videos, I talked to Michael Hedges, the technical director, at length about many topics. And one of the topics I talked about was how they make the six little mid-range drivers in the hyphen behave as one. Here's what he had to say. So, Michael, this comes from the new hyphen loudspeaker. It's called M-Array, I believe. Yep. And normally on the loudspeaker, it has the grill on. Mm -hmm. But we've taken it off to show the mid-range drivers and the tweeter. And what I want to talk about is there are six mid-range drivers, all very small. They're separate, but acoustically, they behave as one, I understand. Yes. Yeah. How is that? So, each of the drive units is 24 ohms, and they're combined in parallel to create a single drive unit that's around 6 ohms. The signal coming off the crossover is exactly the same going to each of the drive units. They all move in unison together and that creates a pressure wave coming off each one that combines to give the effect of a drive unit that's the same overall size as this array here. Now what's interesting is that if you were to compare the response coming off of this drive unit to a drive unit around about the same size as the outside dimension, you'll find this would have better directivity. And that's because it actually looks like a drive unit where the outside diameter is around halfway out from the uh, from the mid-range drivers here. So it's significantly smaller acoustically than it looks like it is, which is beneficial for our crossover frequency and our directivity matching to the tweeter. That's fascinating. Now, what's also interesting about this design is it's kind of like a coaxial driver. The tweeter is in between, right, in the middle of the mid-range. Do these mid-ranges interfere with the output of the tweeter? No, and that's one of the big benefits of it. Okay. So because we have a fixed waveguide for the tweeter, and we have most of our baffle fixed, the tweeter doesn't see any movement from the uh, from the front baffle. Then it would in a normal coaxial drive yeah, where the driver's moving. Yeah, so if you have a, drive, a tweeter placed at the center of a mid-range drive unit, uh -huh. then as that uh, mid-range driver moves, the tweeter's horn is effectively moving, and you end up with intermodulation distortion. In this design, we've tried to minimize that or remove it entirely. Right. Uh, I'd never say completely remove anything, but yeah. uh, minimize that as best as we can by breaking the drive units down to these flat surfaces. Because I can see it's very flat along yeah. the surface there, and yeah. that, that's why you want it like that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Well, that's fascinating. It's a really innovative design. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you. So as you could probably tell in that video, I was a little surprised when he told me that the behavior of those six little drivers wasn't just as one bigger driver, but as a driver that's smaller actually than the diameter around those six drivers. And that's why I like going to these companies and talking to the designers, getting into the nitty gritty, because I always learn something as well. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped.